let's talk about WordTune today. So WordTune is a editor, but it is also a summarizer as well. And I know that we've been really on the summarization, but I feel like all these tools kind of have their pros and cons. So I wanna kind of share them with you and show you how to use them as well. So this is WordTune's like official page. It is a Chrome browser. This is the read version. There's also an editor version and I will do that in a different video. I don't wanna cover those in the same video. But this is the read version and you can just click add to Chrome and you would takes you to the Chrome web store and then you can add to Chrome there. And so what we can do is whenever you have actually added it, you can go to wordtune.com slash read and I'll have all of these in the link below. And you can actually either upload in your files, paste a link or paste text as well. And what I'm gonna do is I wanna show you what this looks like if you're just on a PDF and you're not specifically in WordTunes page. So if I just go to what this PDF, again, this is what I do like all these different analyses tools on, I can come up here and you can see that this says WordTune read right here. And so if I click on it, it brings up this summary here. So I've already done this summary obviously on it to test it out first. And so it brings up this summary here of kind of the snippets or key points in each of the different sections. Now, this is great and everything, and you can just copy it from here and use it, but I think Wartoon goes a little bit further in their summaries that I think is really, really cool whenever you're really trying to analyze a new paper. And so I don't think Wartoon is probably the best for your quick summaries. I would use something like Paper Digest specifically, or even TLDR this, and I'll have both of those videos linked down below if you're just trying to get quick digest. But if you're trying to look for kind of more involved summaries of things, I think this is a really good system for it. So what you can do is you can just export the summaries here. So I want to show you what that looks like. So here is what just those exported summaries looks like. It's taking the main sections of the paper coming out. So you have your introduction, like the significance and background information section. This is kind of your gap in background information. This is previous literature, more background information. They pull from the methods in here. Very similar, I would say, to what TLDR this does. Your steroid adduction. Overall, I think it's pulling pretty well. In fact, it might pull a little bit better than TLDR this just as the basics. I should really do a comparison between these different summarization tools and pull them all. If we come back to the main page, what we can also do is open in website. And this is where we start getting access to a lot more interesting things going on here. So what we can see is we have those same things over here, but we do get a little bit more information on the pages that they're coming from. And we can do a lot more things with each individual one. So with each one, we can say view the source and it'll tell you where it's pulling this information from. You can also say resummarize and it'll redo that. So this time it, it changed how it was wording what it was trying to say to try and get more accurate. So if something comes in really weird, you can ask it to resummarize it. You can also just copy it or you can add it to notes. So something that this allows you to do is you have your PDF in the middle but over here, you can actually write notes about this PDF as well. So I could just say copy, to add to notes. So now it's in there as my notes and my notes are automatically saved. So whenever I'm interested in looking at this, I can always have my notes over here as well if I wanna write on it or if I wanna move certain snippets over. So those are the different things that you can have on each snippet. But I think that it's really cool in being able to actually look at where are things coming from and be able to analyze it knowing because it's basically taking each chunk and summarizing it down. And so you can kind of follow it a little bit better than some of the other tools like TLDR and Paper Digest and even ScholarC because it doesn't allow you to connect these things together. But this, this one's a little bit of a game changer. So you have the spotlight. And the spotlight panel allows you to resummarize by looking for very specific topics. So I could resummarize this just looking for corticosterone, 
or I could re-summarize it looking for lithium or sodium specifically, or the different keywords that it's picked up that are in this paper, I could re-summarize it. So what if I just look for steroid and I can click select? And so this is going to pull up the things that are specifically for steroid. And I've already done that one, but then let's click corticosterone. So it's going to pull up spotlights that are specific for corticosterone. So you can see it's pulling up the solution preparation for corticosterone, the ATDs, so it's showing that sodium and potassium was relevant to the ATDs, and then it's pulling up this. So this is something that you're not getting when you're just doing a summarization tool. And if you ever watch my video on the TLDR summary that I talked about, I was like, it's not pulling up some of these things I would expect it to. Well, in WordTune, you can actually tell it to look for those specific things and have it pull those specific things up. So I think that's a little bit of a game changer and something I haven't seen another AI summarization tool take into account yet. So we can try one more of these. So let's do sodium. Let's try one of the adducts instead. So you can see it's pulling up the background literature of how sodium was used before. And then it's pulling up a couple things for sodium there the different resolutions of those pairs, and then in the collision cross-sections. So it's pulling up your main key points for those. It's not the same as just searching for sodium, though. So over here, you can also sort by these different keywords up here. So this is doing importance. It thinks that these keywords are most important to this paper, but I can also search for frequency. So it's saying like steroid is one of the most frequent terms in this paper as well. So it's kind of interesting in the way that you can search this and, and separate those out. You can also then always export. So we have 10 summaries over here. So I can specifically export the ones related to sodium and let's see what this looks like. And this will only allow you to export, export them as a Word document, or at least in the free version. If you get the paid version, you might be able to export it as more things. But it allows you to export these out, which can be really helpful if you're writing your research paper. And if you are trying to write a research article, check out my scientific research article checklist. I'll leave it in a link in the description below, but it helps you kind of navigate how, how to do that entire process. But when you are trying to write, especially the introduction for your research article, and you want to talk about one theme in a paper, this can help you bring out what's the important things that could be to talk about for this as a background literature paper as well. Now, you do only get three free summarizations a month on their free plan. So while I think this is a really awesome tool, it does have a paid version of it. But if you are doing something specific like a research article or something like that or a literature review, it might be helpful to use it for those three free at least for that month. If you want other free detailed summarizations tools, check out my tutorial on TLDR This over here or my tutorial on Scholar C over here. If you found this content helpful, please like this video and subscribe to this channel if you would like to see more videos on how to become more efficient in your research. I hope this video was helpful and I look forward to seeing you in the next one.